name is Kayla. And we are seniors studying nutrition and dietetics here at Andrews, and we are from the School of Population Health, Nutrition, and Wellness. So today we have three different recipes for you that are foolproof, they're super tasty, and they're fall inspired. So what could be better as we're changing into a new season? So today for the first recipe as an appetizer, we're gonna get started with a roasted beet and carrot salad. So to start off right here, you can see I've got some beets. I have six of them, and as you can see, I have only red beets, but that's only because I couldn't find golden beets as well. If you can find golden beets, it's a really beautiful addition to this recipe. But to start off with, like I said, you want six beets. Now, I have the full beet for you right here. So what you wanna do is the main beet part we're gonna be using is this part right here. Now, of course, this comes straight out of the ground, so you wanna make sure you give it a really good scrub, and if you can, you wanna make sure you peel it as well. If you're having a hard time peeling your beet, what you can do is you can boil it first and then the skin comes off really, really easily. Um, so also, something else with the beet is you see these lovely greens here. Don't waste those. They are so tasty and they're so full of nutrients. And because it is a dark and leafy green, it is full of vitamin K. So I really recommend you to use them. And again, all you have to do is snip them right here and then I would wash them really well and you can cut them. And as you see here, you just have some beet greens. They look just like any other leafy green and are really great to use rather than wasting them. So after you deal with your beets, you have them sliced and you have them on your tray, we're gonna head to the carrots. So for this recipe, you need six carrots. Now I chose not to peel them because the peel actually has a lot of really good nutrition to it. Carrots are really high in vitamin A, which is really good for your eye health. So rather than wasting that peel, we're gonna go ahead and utilize it. So all you need to do is give those peels a really, really good scrub, and then you can chop them. What I did here is I chopped them lengthwise. You don't want them too small for the salad, especially since they are getting cooked, they are going to shrink down in size a little bit. So next to dress our carrots, we are going to use two tablespoons of olive oil. Olive oil is really great for roasting. And of course, adds a really delicious flavor as well. So after you've got your olive oil on there, we're gonna put a little bit of seasoning. So what I have in here is one teaspoon of dried rosemary. If you are lucky enough to still find fresh rosemary right now, I really recommend it because it's so good. But of course, as we are headed into the colder months, it is a lot harder to find herbs and if you can find them, they're really expensive. And, help, and cooking healthy does not have to be expensive. So one way to really well season your vegetables is just by using herbs. So again, I have one teaspoon of dried rosemary in here. And I also have about a pinch of salt. So maybe about one fourth teaspoon. And all you have to do is lightly pour that on all your vegetables. You're gonna wanna make sure you toss them a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my spoon over here you want to be careful with beets because the beautiful color in them does stain everything. So watch out for that. And then to roast these, you're just going to preheat your oven to 400. And you're going to roast them for about 30 minutes, flipping halfway. Now, after you roast your carrots, you obviously do not just pull out this beautiful salad, but you do get these beautiful caramelized beets and carrots. And then what I did to dress this is I put together a super simple dressing of three tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of white wine vinegar, one tablespoon of honey. Again, I came back with a little bit of the rosemary. So I did uh, one, one teaspoon of rosemary, a pinch of salt, and one tablespoon of honey. When you're making your own dressings, it's really important to have a source of acid, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of sweetness too, because the salt and the sweetness help balance it out. So then, I'm just gonna pour this over our salad. Again, for the greens, I use my beautiful beet tops rather than wasting them. I also use two large handfuls of mixed greens. And then, to make this even better, if it could not get good enough, I put a little bit of feta on there, and then I also put 
uh, some walnuts. I put about one fourth cup of each. Walnuts are a really great plant-based source of omega-3s. They also add some good texture to your salad. So this is definitely a crowd pleaser. And one thing I forgot to mention is I did put in one clove of crushed garlic into the dressing as well. And now we're moving on to our soup. Our soup for today is a sweet potato and wild rice soup. It's a broth-based soup, but it also has a little bit of coconut milk for just a little bit of creaminess. So to get started, we're going to again go with one tablespoon of olive oil. It's going to help us saute some of our spices and our garlic as well. In this bowl here, I have four cloves of garlic. I know that seems like a lot, but in this really big pot of soup, it's not going to be too strong, I promise. So for this, you want this on medium to low heat. Garlic can burn really, really fast, and when it burns, it becomes bitter. So you don't want that. You just want a really, really nice golden color to it. So we're just going to let this cook for about 30 seconds or so to kind of get warmed up and start the base of our soup. After that starts to get warmed up, we're going to go ahead and add in our seasonings. So in here we have one teaspoon of Italian seasoning, we have one bay leaf, I have half a teaspoon of thyme, and half a teaspoon of salt. We don't want the flavor of our soup to come from salt, we'd rather have it, have it come from herbs. So what we're doing is we're only starting off with half a teaspoon of salt, and then as you go, and especially at the end, you can put a little finishing touch and just put a little bit of pinch of salt in there, and that's usually good enough. So this warm oil that is now sauteing our garlic and our herbs is really going to help bring out the flavor of our herbs. And next what you want to do is you want to add in all of your hard veggies. So in here, as you can see from the top, I have one large sweet potato. Sweet potatoes are so good for you. That beautiful orange color means they are high in vitamin C, they are high in vitamin A, and they are packed with antioxidants as well. So sweet potatoes are awesome for you. We also have four ribs of celery. Now, not a lot of people know this, but the whole stock of celery is exactly what I call it. It's a stock, but the individual, like parts of the celery you peel off are called ribs. So I have four ribs in there. I have one small yellow onion, and I'm gonna go ahead and put all of this in here. And I also have two carrots as well. Now we want to put these veggies in here first because again, like I said, there are hard veggies. So we want to go ahead and start putting a little bit of heat to them. Making sure you mix in all of your seasonings with them. Now obviously, all of these hard veggies sitting here are not just going to cook. You have to put your liquid in with them. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add eight ounces of mushrooms. And then we are going to add two cans of cannellini beans. So these are also like great northern beans is another name for them. They are white in color. They're super delicious. Every half cup of these has seven grams of protein. So again, another really great source of plant-based protein. And actually with these beans, something really cool is I love to use canned beans, right? Who doesn't? They're really efficient. They're really easy to use. But with canned beans, a lot of the times, they're really high in sodium. So if you can't buy a option that is lower in sodium, what I recommend you do is just to rinse your beans off. You can grab a colander or like a, a mesh strainer and just pour your beans in there, rinse them out with water, and oftentimes you can get almost up to 40% of the sodium out. So that's really great as well. And the sodium in there does help season the soup a little bit, but you don't really need all the extra sodium. Then what we're gonna do next is we're going to add in two large handfuls of kale. When you use your kale, make sure that you take the stems off of it. The stems are really hard and fibrous and they're really not very pleasant to eat. Because kale is a dark leafy green, it is high in vitamin K. Now of course you can see our pot is filling up with all veggies, which is awesome. We love when that happens. But of course we've got to start working in some liquid. So after you give this 
a quick stir here. Again, remembering that this part is not super important for cooking the vegetables. That really comes later when the soup is brought to a boil and left to simmer for a while. So if your vegetables look pretty much raw right now, that's okay because they still are. So next, I'm gonna add in some coconut milk. So this coconut milk is gonna bring a little bit of creaminess to it, which is super delicious. I know it sounds a little strange to put coconut milk in your soup, but it's really not sweet, especially if you make sure to get the one without added sugar. And then we're gonna go in with some wild rice. So today I have a blend of brown rice and wild rice. Wild rice takes a really long time to cook. So if you get a blend, it kind of cuts down on that time a little bit. Again, keep stirring a little bit so things get incorporated. Again, right now we have a huge pot of veggies in here, which is study, someone studying nutrition, I absolutely love that. Next, we're gonna add in our vegetable broth. So again, I said this is a broth-based soup. So in here, we have six cups of vegetable broth. Now you're gonna to want to give this a really good stir so everything is evenly incorporated. And after that, all you're gonna do is put your lid on. You're gonna turn your burner on high until it starts to boil. And once it does that, we'll turn it down to low and just let it simmer for about 40 minutes or until your rice and your hard veggies are cooked. Normally the rice is what takes the longest, but you do want to make sure you check in on that soup kale too, because it can take a little while. Now after that is done, you end up with a really beautiful and tasty soup. So this is a huge pot of soup and can definitely feed any crowd or gathering of family members you have. Again, this is packed with so many veggies. And one thing I like to do to add a little color on top, if I had fresh parsley, I would use it, but I don't. So I'm just gonna use dried, put a little bit on there for a little bit of green color and put a little croutons on there for just a little bit of some texture, a little crunch on there. These croutons I made are super simple. All I did was take an, an old hamburger bun, I chopped it up, spray a little oil on it and cooked it at 350, so not hard to do. And this is your end product. Um, so last but not least, we have our dessert for our final recipe. So the dessert is gonna be a vegan pumpkin bread. Um, I like this recipe because of course it's vegan. And I've seen that other people have made this recipe and said that they like it better than other pumpkin breads they've tried, such as like the one from Starbucks. I know you may have tried it or not, but people have been saying that this one is actually tastes a lot better than the one from Starbucks. And this one is vegan, so that's another plus to it. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one and a half cups of pumpkin puree inside of this bowl. So we already have this out, so we're just gonna take a spoon and put it inside. And here's the other. All right, I'm just gonna leave this one here. So next we have um, our flaxseed and our water. I just have one tablespoon of flaxseed and then two and a half tablespoons of water. And we mix that together and then we also put it in. So the ground flaxseed in the water is the egg replacer for this recipe. So you just put it inside and then you have to kind of whisk it. We don't have a whisk, so I'll just use the spoon together until it's smooth and kind of blend it in. Okay, and next we have our canola oil and soy milk. We have one fourth cup of soy milk and a half a cup of canola oil that we're gonna add to the mix. And then next we have one and one fourth cup of brown sugar. So here's a cup. And then here's the one fourth cup. And now we're gonna mix all of this um, smoothly so that everything gets blended in. Okay, 
now we have our dry ingredients. Um, the, the ingredients that are in here are flour, salt, baking soda, baking powder, cinnamon, and cloves. So we have to add this into the mix and we have to stir it gently. We can't over mix the ingredients or else the bread won't turn out the way we want it to be. So I just have to kind of mix it slowly and fold it on top of each other until the ingredients are blended in. This might take a while, but it's still important to not over mix these ingredients. I know you guys can't smell over online, but already this smells so good with all of the like really aromatic spices in there. Okay, so now that we have all the ingredients in here, we can kind of, we can put the ingredients into this pan in order for the bread to bake. So I'm going to use the spatula to try and help me put it inside. Thank you. Okay, and the final step is to pour the pumpkin seeds on top of the pumpkin bread. Just kind of spread them out over so you can have the pumpkin seeds inside of the bread once the bread is done baking. And that is it. Now you can put your bread inside the oven that's preheated and it will bake for one hour and 15 minutes. And obviously we didn't bake it, but here's the final result of the pumpkin bread that you'll get once you're done baking. So yeah, that's it for our recipes. Um, thank you so much for coming and tuning in to our cooking demo and we'll get those recipes to you so you can replicate those at home if you, if you so choose. So we really do appreciate you um, tuning in.